In mid to late June 2001, Sharon Watkin, an Enron employee, was working just like a normal day. But when she was working on the asset listing of the company, she found something that surprised her and would be the start of the biggest bankruptcy of America. This is the story of Enron. Everything started on 1980s. This is when President Reagan became President of America. I execute the office of President of the United States. I congratulate you, sir. And on January 28, 1981, President Reagan removed the price controls on gasoline, propane, and produced crude oil. Because of this, it sparked a brilliant idea from a young man named Ken Lay. Lay thought that he could benefit from the government decision to let the gas price float. Ken Lay then created Enron through a merger of two companies. Everything at the first place went well. Enron grows and become a well-known company. But not so long after that, Ken Lay already revealed his mask and showed his real self. It was in 1987, there were two oil traders trying to bet on oil trading if oil price would go up or down, and they always win. Because of the massive earnings that these two oil traders got, it brings suspicion to Enron's board they began the investigation. Well, this oil trading business had profits that nobody could really understand, and in fact, that many of Kenway's attendants questioned. They said, this business can't be making this much money legitimately. Something weird is going on. Something weird was going on, and they found something wrong about Enron president, Louis Borgett. Mr. Borgett had taken uh, some three plus million dollars of corporate funds and put it in a personal account of his. Borgett was called by the Enron board to Houston to explain everything. First, Borgett presented false bank record to Enron. Then he admitted that he had diverted company profit to his personal account. It was brought to the attention of the Enron board. Auditors were brought in as well to look at the whole thing. And the auditor tells Ken Lay that these two traders have manipulated earnings and gambling crazily. What does Ken Lay do? He didn't fire those guys, but encouraged them to keep doing what they have been doing. But everything turned around when the traders risked and lost all of Enron's reserves. Jerry got this panic call that they had uh, drawn down $90 million in the previous five days. What we could do is just try to find out what kind of gorilla we had uh, loose up there. By acting fast, the account of Enron bluffed the market and saved the company. Although the company was saved, the company president was sentenced to one year in prison with Enron's most profitable trader behind bars. Lay needed to hire someone to continue making millions for the company. This is when Jeff Skilling came into the picture. Skilling had lots of big ideas for the company, but his only condition was to be able to use mark-to-market accounting. Mark-to-market accounting allows the company to book potential future profits the day a deal was signed instead of when revenue was actually earned. We've been working hard on this and we've really pulled out all the stops. Look what we got. Origination. We did 20 million last year. We think we can do 120 million dollars this year. Trading. We did 10 million last year. We think we can do 64 this year. This is the key. Can add a gazillion dollars to the bottom line. And with this, Enron has a massive earning and attracts more investor. But it has another problem that limits the company's stock price to skyrocket. Enron had a massive debt in its book, which is $30 billion. But Ken Lay has a card up his sleeves. This is when he introduced Andrew Fastow as the CFO of Enron. Andrew Fastow was a genius man that Ken Lay needed to perfect their fraud scheme. Fastow made fake companies to hide the debt of Enron and make it appear as if money was coming into the company. And everything went great from there on. Enron posted a 30% jump in second quarter profits as web-based trading boosted its wholesale energy business. We're never satisfied, and, and, and I don't want us to ever be satisfied with the stock price. It should always be higher. the first crack begins to show. It was in 1996. And not one, but two rolling blackouts. 26,000 miles of California power lines, enough to circle the earth. But for the second day in a row, not enough electricity for America's largest state 
and the world's sixth largest economy. At that time, California deregulated the energy industry and Enron took advantage of it. I knew that there was illegality going on. I could feel it, I could smell it, I could sense it, and there was no other explanation because the numbers just didn't add up. We had enough power in California. It was never about lack of supply. Enron strategically took power plants offline during peak demand periods creating artificial shortages and driving up prices. Those guys, at the flip of a switch, could just yank the California economy on its leash whenever they wanted to, and they did it, and they did it, and they did it, and they made so much money. Traders were thus able to sell power at premium prices, sometimes up to a factor of 20 times its normal value. They were also buying cheap electricity in California, sending it out of state, and then reselling it back to California at a significantly higher price. But everything turned around when the governor and the people knew what Enron did. A top executive at one of America's biggest power companies received a raucous welcome in San Francisco tonight. Protesters heckled Enron CEO Jeffrey Skilling outside and inside during his appearance at the Commonwealth Club. One of the protesters even brought a blueberry pie and delivered it herself. I'm going to get the nine billion dollars back that Enron, Dynergy, and Reliant stole from us and get it back to you. Because of this, Enron price was falling down. And Jeff Skilling, the CEO of Enron, knows that everything is going down. He suddenly resigned as CEO and cashing out nearly $60 million in stock, which made everyone suspicious. And the day after Jeff resigned, this is where the major problem happened. This is when Sharon Watkins was working on the asset listing and founded Fasto's fake companies. Because of this, SEC began to investigate. They found out that Enron has faked their financial statement. Enron then announced massive financial restatement and investors began to take their money away. And with this in 2001, Enron filed for bankruptcy and went out of business. Making 20,000 employees lost $1.2 billion, retirees lost $2 billion, but their top executive cashed in $116 million on stock. Jeff Skilling and Ken Lay were tried together and convicted in May 2006 on fraud and conspiracy charges. Lay died of heart disease two months later while awaiting a prison sentence that could have lasted 45 years. Skilling was fined $45 million and is currently serving a 24-year sentence in federal prison.